Cooper Manning, who uh, you can hear on uh, Fox NFL kickoff pregame show uh, during the fall. Also, uh, the brother of uh, Eli and Peyton Manning and the dad of Arch Manning, who uh, we will talk about a little bit coming up here. But, uh, Cooper, we saw, uh, we saw Arch playing for, uh, for the Greenies in basketball in the spring at the Dunham School. And, of course, their head coach is Randy Livingston. You were a teammate of, uh, of Liv's back at Newman. Can you give our listening audience, especially the younger listeners out there, how good of a player Randy Livingston was coming up in high school basketball? Hey, guys, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, Randy Livingston, I mean, he was the parade All-American MVP as both a junior and a senior in high school. It was um, one of those guys these days would be headed straight to the pros and and um, just an unbelievable teammate, won three straight championships in a row and just a, a delightful guy. I'm thrilled he's back at Newman. Yeah, I, I bet so. And, and many people don't know this, but he was a, he was a quarterback at John Curtis as a uh, as a youngster in uh, in seventh and eighth grade and uh, and was was hopeful to play quarterback at Newman. And then a guy named Peyton Manning uh, <laughs> showed up and uh, and yeah. went on to rewrite the uh, the record books. Um, this is a cool opportunity for us to interview you. Uh, you interview a lot of people in the fall. Who was somebody that you looked forward to interviewing you uh, during uh, during your Fox uh, your Fox pregame coverage? Well, unlike this interview, I'm looking for guys with big personality. So, <laughs> um, you know, we like to have a lot of fun. We don't take ourselves too seriously. So, we try to find people with a little bit of a, a you know, maybe a talent. Uh, you know, Keenan Allen played the piano. I had a fun interview with Taysom Hill down here. Um, Alvin Kamara was probably a highlight as I got my nose pierced or people at least thought I got my nose pierced. So uh, we keep it really, uh, it's kind of a way of showing another side of these players, you know, away from the field and just kind of show kind of what personalities they have. So we have fun. So you say, uh, you know, you go over the big personalities kind of, you know, deriding yourself, but my little brother was at Nichols playing quarterback. He did the Manning passing Academy and he was obsessed with you. Said you're the funniest guy. I think you had like a full money suit on, or so. I, I don't know. He, he said you're the man. What has the Manning Passing Academy meant to like you and your family over the years? Well, I think selfishly for my dad, it's a way of getting all his boys together you know, on a weekend, huh. and we all you know, room with my dad. And Peyton rooms with Eli, and so we uh, <laughs> we kind of have it on the books, and it's football, and it's fun, and surrounded by a bunch of other uh, promising athletes, and it's fun to have these college coaches or college players come back and be counselors my dad my dad thinks he's like the you know head of admissions at like harvard he's like oh i think i got another kid coming in he really thinks he can really dictate who's uh going to be the next great player so we have about usually about 40 starting college quarterbacks come back and be counselors and let them kind of soak up the mojo with peyton and eli but at the same time give back to these kids so it's uh it's a shame it didn't happen this summer, but uh, we're looking yeah. forward to our 25th year next year. Yeah, wow. well, we had a chance to talk to Joe Burrow when he came back from it last season, and it seemed like that's where he kind of introduced himself to some people around college football that started talking about him. Did you guys have any idea that it was going to grow to where it is right now? I mean, if you speak of it from a reputation standpoint, Burrow said it last year, he had to go to Thibodeau. I mean, he had to go there just because of what you guys have built. Did you guys have any idea – that it would butt into this? You know, we started this 25 years ago, and we're hosting it at Tulane. Probably had 150 people there and, and just kind of just kind of blossomed. We wound up moving over to Hammond at Southeastern and we had it for several years and just really literally ran out of field space. And Thibodeau, they just mow down another sugarcane field, and, you know, and, <laughs> and there you go. So it has been uh, – you know, we've kept it pretty simple. There have been some people who really wanted to, hey, let's move this down to – you know Disney, or, or, or really take it to the next level. And Peyton's done a good job. Saying, let's just let's just keep it as a football camp, oh, yeah. uh, not a lot of media, and just keep it back to the basics. And uh, I think people like that. It's kind of refreshing. Yeah, and uh, it's incredible for the for the town. And uh, one player, Coop, that I think that a lot of people expect to see there is going to be Arch Manning, uh, a very good quarterback in his own right. Uh, we've talked a lot about Arch in this show, and I want to ask you from the dad perspective what it's like having a son who already as a freshman, just the profile and the name and everything. Like we spent here on local radio, an entire 15 minute segment talking about the potential of arch in multiple years, maybe going to LSU. What's it like being on the father's side of, of all of this? Well, I just like high school athletics. I mean, I'm, I've got a house now where I'll have three 
high school athletes this fall. You know, a girl playing volleyball and two wow. boys playing high school football. So I'm just a big fan of sports, and uh, I think it helps you as a parent. It helps them have places to be in the morning and, you know, lifting and running. I think that's a big distraction, and it, uh, it kind of helps me in getting them in trouble. But um, Arch, is, he loves football. He's enjoying um, his friends and the workouts and growing. He's had a kind of a growth spurt here the last couple um, months and just enjoyed being in the weight room and throwing. And he just loves it. If it was me pressuring him to play or hurry up and get ready, it's, it's kind of always been, hey, can, we, can you come catch for me? Can we go throw? Can you come feed me hoops? You know, and my boys are like that. And my, it's just that makes it a lot easier on a parent. Is it going to be as cool for you guys as it's going to be for us to see a Manning in an LSU jersey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. You know, Eli's, I mean, I'm going to say Eli. Arch has grown up around all my good friends. They're, you know, locally in New Orleans, they're big LSU fans. So they're always, they've been giving him a hard time for a long time about kind of the Baton Rouge. And, and he's been a couple games there. And, um, you know, they've got a great program. And Coach O's done unbelievable. And, Arch is friends with, you know, Walker Howard just committed their, yeah. their buddies for a long time, and I know Jamie well. And so um, they've got it going right now, no question. Uh, it's exciting to see and great for the state and great for the, great for the SEC. Can, can you talk about how recruiting has changed? Because you had a front row seat, and you were a highly yeah. recruited athlete your, yourself coming out of Newman in the early 90s as a receiver. Then you committed and signed with Ole Miss. And then you had a, you had a front row seat to see the number one player in the country in Peyton be recruited by all corners of the – uh, uh, of the USA, can you tell how? Can you tell us how recruiting may have changed? Even though you're just starting to see the early signs of it, with with Arch yeah, in your house, right? I'm still learning how it all works. Mm-hmm. I know it starts meaningfully, meaningfully earlier than it ever did. Yeah. back when we were exposed to it. I mean, at this time, Peyton had probably not even gotten a letter yet, wow. and so um, it's a little early. And that's what we've been trying to do is just kind of keep it normal because. Um, it can get away from you here. So we're, um, as a family, just excited that our, you know, our, our kids are playing and just try to keep it focused on making friends and getting better and learning how to win and learning how to lose and enjoying bus rides and just kind of enjoy the whole experience. It's not, it's not getting too caught up in the recruiting side too much. We've, we've talked to your dad on this show, and we also had Peyton on, which was a cool experience for us. And we both asked their perspective because they've been in the city for so long in watching the Saints to become what they are now. And you guys were there when they were wearing bags over their heads all throughout to, to Mike Ditka, to Sean Payton, uh, to NFC Championships, to Super Bowls. From your point of view, as a citizen of New Orleans, can, can you talk about where the Saints were to where they are now from, from kind of watching them as a, as a, as a person that's kind of had a, 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 a point of interest? Well, it's it's amazing. I mean, what Sean and, and uh, Mickey Loomis have done and uh, Drew and that, that whole crew is just, um, you know, they're, they're expecting excellence. And that was not always the case here in New Orleans. You were the Saints, the, the passion for, from the fans and the, the loyalty to the Saints has always been there. But now expecting to win and, and maybe even at times being probably a little spoiled. Um, yeah. It is, it is a, it's a high-grade thing. I mean, it's one thing to go into a season expecting Super Bowls and nothing, you know, hope to win a couple games. And the attitude has definitely shifted over the last uh, 10, 15 years. And it's uh, it's fun to be. Um, again. Did we lose him? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So broke thought, up a little bit at the end there. Cooper, thank you very Sorry. much for your time. Uh, I know that uh, it took us a little bit to set this up, and we appreciate you uh, you, you fitting this well, in the schedule. Coop, man. I, I got to get one more in. The fans want to know. Yeah. It's all in our chat here. So you're saying the Mannings are open to the idea of sending a kid to LSU. They just they want to hear it. Uh, we're open to sending our kids wherever they want to go. To there school. you go. For, okay, good. So, <laughs> I, love know, it. I don't think I don't think MIT is calling anytime soon. <laughs> but you know, we uh, look. You know, we raise them to, to do what they want to do. They make decisions, and, and and we support them. That's the way it works. I know who is calling. LSU and Coach O are on line one. Yeah. We uh, we appreciate the time this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, Thanks so much, is, man. Uh, Cooper Manning checking in from uh, from New Orleans this morning, talking a little bit about his recruitment, his son's recruitment, where LSU fits in, and that LSU does have a legitimate opportunity right. to uh, to get uh, to get Arch Manning, another another talented quarterback in the state of Louisiana.